distinguished colleagues, I am from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, my take, my own take on this very important motion is on the point of duty and on the point of responsibility. Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat that my take on this subject matter under discussion is on the point of duty and point of responsibility. Mr. Speaker, you may recall that in the last two weeks, Mr. Speaker may recall that in the last two weeks, you directed me, and I believe honorable members are entitled to know, you directed me as leader of this great chambers, the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, you mandated me on behalf of the 360 members of this hallowed chambers to go and speak to the protesting members of Islamic movement of Nigeria at the first gate, the first gate to the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, that I did with all sense of responsibility and commitment to the fact that this house remains the house of the Nigerian people. Mr. Speaker, while I was going, relying on the mandate you gave me, I took a sample of at least one member per zone of the six geopolitical zones and went to engage the members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria along with them. Mr. Speaker, I want to agree with you and will agree with any one of us here that for as long as this house remains to provide that democratic platform for every Nigerian to come and lay on their own grievances, I want to believe that this house also entitled to some level of respect as an institution. We provide that democratic opening, we provide that democratic platform, everyone, every Nigerian has the right to come here and speak to whatever angle, whatever quarter, through these chambers. Mr. Speaker, I went religiously with all sense of commitment, interacted and engaged with these people. At the end of my engagement with them by your mandate, sir, and the mandate of these Green Chambers, we extracted two-way commitments. I, on my own part, said, as representative of the House of Representatives, speaking with them there, and on your mandate, I have agreed to report their grievances to you as my presiding officer, as the Speaker of the House. And I believe you will, in turn, extend the same to the Senate President, who is also the Chairman of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I rise here today to say proudly that I have done that based on the commitment I gave to the members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria. In our first meeting, our first inaugural meeting, our maiden meeting of the joint leadership meeting of the National Assembly, where the chairman of the National Assembly, Senator Ahmed Lawan, chaired, and you deputized him, I took my time to report exactly what I have done with members of this group. And their leaders were there. The second commitment I gave to them, sir, was that we will find time. The number they came with was too, much for them, was too much for us to contain and accommodate into any reasonable meeting. I gave them the second commitment that I will discuss with you and on your approval, you will allow maybe one to five members of this group, especially their leaders, to come and engage with you in a more convenient matter, manner so that we will ultimately see and understand the case they want to make. And as an institution that must always speak for the people of this country, after reporting to you, the Senate President and your humble self have taken this matter so seriously. You have even gave the, lead, the body of the principal officers a commitment that to take the matter upstairs to the upper quarters to see how, can you be, how you can be able to resolve it amicably. Mr. Speaker, I rise here to say with, my, with all sense of disappointment, even when I kept in touch with them, I have their numbers. I spoke with them th severally, appealing to them to be patient, be calm, be calm. The House and the National Assembly is doing something about this. Only for us, to my disappointment and to, disappoint, to the disappointment of this National Assembly, the next day was that this place became their next subject of attack. Whoever wants to go to justice, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I want to say, must go with clean hands. We provide opening. We provide platform. We provide enabling environment for every Nigerian to come and share his grievances before us. 
and we will make sure that we will speak for them where they cannot be able to speak for themselves. We will make sure that we will now extend their voices to where their voices may not be able to reach. I want to say with all sense of responsibility that the attack they, they meted on this institution was like a breach of the institutional commitment and agreement I gave to them. That notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, I want to say, based on my personal opinion, that while you have taken seriously my report and my commitment from them, the Senate President also has taken, on behalf of the leadership of the National Assembly, has taken seriously to see how they can come to an amicable resolution. I would like to use this opportunity to urge and call on the leaders, the very respected leaders of the Islamic movement of Nigeria. Of course, it is a registered organization. I don't even subscribe to the idea of uh, uh, proscribing them. It's a registered organization, but as a registered organization operating under a democratic polity, we must be able to operate by the rules. We must be able to operate by the rules. No one can aspire to get something right done through impunity, through threat, through killings. And I'm proudly, I am proudly a Muslim. I believe so many other members that are here who are Muslims, like the members of the Shiite, are proud Muslims, including your humble self, Mr. Speaker. I don't know wherever in our scriptures I have not heard from any malam where Islam pro promotes disunity or promotes crisis or promotes killings. So these inactions, this protest, incessant protest, which is leading to killings of Nigeria, is anti-Islamic. I therefore want to say, as my own opinion, and by extension want to plead with their, my colleagues here to adopt as their own opinion, is that these people must shed their swords. Members of the, international, members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria should respectively shed their swords, allow dialogue to continue, allow engagements to continue. Let us be peaceful so that in the end, we can be able to address this perennial problem, which all of us here are sympathetic to. Mr. Speaker, I think with this take, this is my submission, and I hope members will adopt my position as if it's their own. Mr. Speaker, if we don't do that, if we don't do that and we continue the way we are going, it's like we are setting a very dangerous precedence where someone will come around in the name of democracy, lay grievances the next two, three days when action is not taken, then he now takes the law to his hands. Mr. Speaker, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable and we must always try to let our people understand that wherever you come for any cause to fight for, you must do that judiciously and in tandem and in accordance with the rules of the land. I want to say, as somebody that is also the ambassador, as an ambassador of the government on the floor of the House, that government should also be concerned about the welfare and the plight of our people. If there is any, if there is any matter to be discussed to allow Nigeria to be in peace, I want to also urge, on the other hand, that government should also employ means of dialogue and diplomatic resolutions of this matter. Mr. Speaker, this is my take, and I thank my honorable colleagues for listening to my own contribution to this very important matter. Thank you.